Good day, Tragic here, and welcome back to Legends of Andor. I had so much fun playing the last video that I really quickly knocked out the next scenario for the mod, and we're going to play it. Darkness Descends. <laughs> this is a hard one. This one has an incredibly random setup, so sometimes it's super easy, sometimes it's like impossible, like literally impossible. So we'll just see how we go. Now, let's just unpack this sucker. You'll also note I got like a cheap uh, $10 keyboard from Harvey Norman, so I, it now doesn't make any noise. Like, bucket spring keyboards are really good to type on and do programming and writing, but they're not so good for making videos because they're so clickety-clackety. So now it should be silent. Anyway, let's unpack this scenario. And it does some of the setup for us again. It does the automatic uh, shuffles and deals out the fog tokens and puts out the peasants. Everything else you have to do manually. And we are going to use the flat figurines. Kind of wish I didn't actually make standy versions because it's just all this extra work <laughs> that I don't use. Okay, and also this time when we roll, we're going to roll for just the sexes because... There's eight total heroes, and we've used four of them. So we're just going to use the four we haven't used. And in fact, instead of rolling, I've built a little tool just to generate random numbers for setups. So if we just generate four random singles, uh, blamo. Oops, I said three. Let's do four random singles. Let's try and get one without any doubles. There we go. Three, six, five, four. So three is a man. We're going to be using odds for men again. And then it's six, five, and four. So this is a pretty weird setup because we've got so many archers. We are going to be using the small standees. I'm also going to do this a different thing where I, I put all the rollers in one spot just to help me organize it. Now remember we go in rank order so it's a little bit of a different setup as to normal. Okay so this guy is rank 14 so 14 is here. This guy is rank 15 or girl I should say. It goes up here. This dude is rank 25 so goes down here and this dude is ranked 50 goes right up here into the forest let's quickly finish the setup oh yeah and we'll just quickly do this as well bam something like that and we're just going to leave these guys here it's just going to mean that i don't have to move the camera around so much while i'm rolling okie doke so before we do the actual quest, let's just have a look at our characters. We have Thorn the Warrior. Now he has a pretty amazing ability. He gains five willpower every time he drains a well instead of three. Now he does get to roll four dice and he'll get to four dice pretty quickly with that five willpower gain. But his real strength is the fact that draining a single well gives him two movement because Two extra movement into night time is minus two each. So he can drain one well and get two movement and still come out plus one will because he gets five will. So his real power is his mobility. Now, everyone else, like all three of these guys are all rangers, which is very, very unusual, but we'll have to see what we can do. Now, Riga is a centaur, and she's kind of weird. She can't hold uh, items on her person, so she can't take the helmet, she can't take the sh shield or the eagle or whatever, but she does have the three normal slots. She's so big, she should have a fourth slot, in my opinion, but whatever. Now, she has an unusual board. You can see it's actually got four levels instead of three like everyone else. Same amount, so it's still 19 points. Well, it's actually less, so it's 19 instead of 20. But what's interesting is when she gets to the bottom line, the fourth row, 
Every time she drains a well, she can choose, instead of getting willpower, to gain plus one strength. So if you can get her down to the bottom row fairly quickly, she can basically get strength for free, maybe two strength a, t a day for free. So she can get pretty high pretty quickly, not as quick as the dwarf. The dwarf is obviously arguably one of the best characters in the game because of that, you know, one gold for one strength. But I do really like her. Now, she can also fight ranged, just like the archer, except when she is in close combat, she does use all her dice at once, like the warrior. So she's an unusual one. Then we have the ranger. This is Pasco. He is bonkersly strong. And basically, he look at all his dice. So he just sort of stands away in the... He can initiate combat, like all the archers, from a, the space next to the monster. doesn't have to be with the monster. And he has to roll his dice one at a time. You'll see this in action, but basically, you roll a dice and you choose to keep it or not. And whatever... If you choose to roll a dice, you can't ever choose the old die, okay? So it replay, each time you roll, you replace. So if you get to... 14 plus, he actually has five rolls. So with five rolls, you can be guaranteed a pretty high roll. And if you have the mage, which unfortunately we don't, that allows you to flip die around, you can pretty much guarantee a five or a six every single time he attacks. He's very, very, very strong, especially if you boost him with the witch's brew. Now, Travola is... Interesting. This hero is, I think, is one of the weirdest heroes. He's the assassin. He also is ranged. He also can fight with only one die at a time, just like the archer, except he's got much less dice. But his ability is really bizarre. So if we take a look over at the monster strength track, you have this cube that, you know, you sort of goes around the place and covers things, right? So say we're fighting a war dock. His ability allows him to move that cube to here. So the war dock has just lost four strength right off the bat. Now, this is huge, a huge ability, especially when he's fighting solo. Like if you're fighting like a gore, you can make it worth zero. The downside of this ability is that it actually changes the reward as well. So if you're on a 6-6 six, six and you take it to a 4-4, four, four, you know, by moving it one down. This is the reward you're receiving on killing him. But it's still very, very, very strong, and especially for, you know, just that, that plus, plus four doesn't seem like a lot, but it's actually pretty huge. That being said, the ability isn't as good as you might think. Like, you think it's going to be amazing, but I actually very rarely seem to use it because it's... <laughs> And one of the weird things is it only works against Gores, Skrulls, and Wardocks. It does not work against Trolls. It does specify not the final adversary, but it doesn't actually say Troll on here either. So you can't do Trolls, which is crazy. I don't even know why that is a thing. So usually... I don't know why. I, I just think it's weird that it doesn't do Trolls, but it does everything else. And it specifically says not the final bosses, <laughs> but uh, whatever. Look, I don't know. It doesn't say anything. The card specifically lists all the monsters except except the trolls. So I just don't think it works on trolls. I'll find out before I actually do my turn. Anyway, so that's pretty much the heroes. Let's uh, check out the the cards. You blamo. Dark clouds pass in front of the sun and a pale shadow falls over Reichberg Castle. Prince Thorland has discovered that a dark mage named Vorkor controls the vicious monsters roaming through Andor. The heroes now have many tasks to complete, and this time in Andor's history will later be known as the Days of Resistance. Now, the mod does everything here except for Gore in Space Nine, Troll in Space 30. So let's just... Gore in space 9, and 30 is here. Yeah. Okay, reveal five monster tiles one by one, and immediately follow the instructions. 
So this is what makes this quest so bizarre is that there's all the, let me just shuffle this actually, there's these sort of monster tiles and they can really, you know, you just don't know what to expect. They can, you can have an incredibly impossible setup or it can be an easy setup. You just don't know. Take the scroll who occupies the lowest numbered space between 1 and 50 and move it once in the direction of the arrow. Well, look at that. There are no scrolls on the board at all, so that's nothing. That's a good start. Take the troll who occupies the highest numbered space between 1 and 50 and move it once in the direction of the arrow. That's actually good, so we're not getting more monsters. Place one gore at 21 and one troll at 23. That is not so good. 21 is here. Is that right? And a troll at 23. Wow. That is bad news. Place a troll at 36. Oh. Wow. Place a gore at 50 and a war dock at 51. Gore at 50 and a war dock at 51, which is here. Okay, so like I said, it's just so random. These trolls are so hard to beat in the early game. You've got to get your strength up super quick. And we don't have long for these things to come in. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four turns. One, two, three, four. Four turns for this guy to get in, assuming there's no other problems, which there probably will be. This guy here is definitely going to take one of the slots, so we need to get two, at least, you know, at least two shields free, plus to all the other things we need to do. Crazy. Okay, now we have to place monster tiles on the legend track, and to do this, we're just going to roll again. I'm going to use this little device. So we roll five times. Blam. Okay, so we've got three ones here. But that doesn't really matter because I'll just roll again. But basically, you can only have a tile twice on the same location. So it's one, three, one, two is what we've got. So that is one, three, one, two. And I'll just roll again and take the bottom number, which is a four. Bam. Okay, so that's not a particularly great start. And who knows what those things are. They could be really bad or really good. Farmer on 24 and 28, which is done. And Prince goes on another die roll. So let's roll again. He goes on one. That is terrible. So he goes here. Means he comes out very early, but he also goes away very early. One two, three, four. So this mark here is where he will disappear. Each hero sees one fake card and read its text aloud. Okay, so let's just draw our fake cards. Like so. And these are kind of like objectives that you have to complete during the mission. And again, this is so random, this quest. These could be, this could make the quest impossible. There's a number of these fake cards will actually make you discard peasants. And with all those trolls and stuff, if we don't have all our peasants, even with all our presents, it's going to be very, very difficult with three trolls on turn zero. The hero defends the people in the castle as best he can. You must drop one unused witch's brew and one medical herb, any value, at the castle. Then return both items to the game box. Okay, that's bad, so we lose a witch's brew. You must defeat two monsters in battle alone before the legend marker reaches F on the legend track. Okie dokie. F, where's F? Two monsters alone. Dang. 
One of the creatures dabbles with magics of the rune stones. After revealing the first rune stone, press the scroll on that space and highlighted it with a star token. Okay. Despite the horrors of these days, a farmer's wedding is happening in the Tree of Songs. The hero is prepared to escort the bride and groom to the wedding. Place a farmer token on space 40. Which is... Where is 40 here? You must bring this farmer and an additional farmer to space 57. Return both to the game box. So that's basically game over. So we're going to have one spare farmer. So we can only have two monsters get into the base for the whole game unless another mo unless another farmer comes out somehow. This is going to be nigh impossible. And we've got to go to space 57, which is up here somewhere. Bam. Okay. Wow, that is a horrible start. We start with two strength points and five gold. So I'm going to give this guy five gold. Actually, I'm going to give it to you. Ugh. He needs he needs to get his strength up so he can do the so he can fulfill his fate card by fighting alone. So I'm going to give him the five gold. So I'll give him four gold. And I'll give this guy one gold. Yeah. And everyone starts with two strength points, which we have already done. So we have mustn't get the castle overrun and we have to do the dark legend card, which I forgot to do. So basically we've got four dark legend cards. We shuffle them. We keep one. We discard the rest. And this basically becomes the final boss for this quest. We have to roll five herb tokens and five uh, rune stones and three herb tokens. So I'm just going to roll five rune stones. Oops. Blamo, 22, 22, 55. Look, better shuffle them first. So 22 is here, 55 is here, 64, wow, that one's in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, it's down here somewhere, right? Well, that's not too bad. 14 and 55, there's 2 and 55. Runestones can be in the same location, they don't need to be in unique locations. And 14 is the other one, which is right here. Bam. That's luck. That's the only bit of luck in the whole setup. And we also need two herb locations, 40 and 25. 40. Now you can roll the dice if you want to. I just wanted to, I just made this tool to make it a little bit quicker for setup. 40, where is 40? 40. 40. And 25, which is where our uh, archer is. That's handy. And that, my friends, is the setup for Legends of Andor Part 3. Oh, wow, this is an impossibly hard setup. I really don't know 
how we're going to be able to cope with this. Wow, I can't believe how difficult this looks. Look at these trolls. These trolls, they have 14 and they have 12. Plus they roll three dice. So just give it, let's just put it into perspective. Where we are now, if we are any adjustments, let's just do a test roll. So one, two, three. Okay, we get a three. Let's say we're doing ranged five. We'll keep that. Four, we can do better. We can roll four times. Ooh, maybe we can't do better. Last roll. Ugh, lucky. And you... And remember, we can't drop it down because of his ability. We get three rolls or two rolls? Yeah, we've only got two rolls. I don't think I'm going to risk anything higher than a three. I don't risk on two rolls because it's a 50-50 chance. We know we got a four. Let's just see what would happen if I did risk it. Oh, that's so annoying. Whatever. So we end up with... Three plus five plus five plus four, which equals 17 plus two by four equals 23. So we have a total of 23. So this guy goes one, two, three. Wow, double six. <laughs> He actually rolls 26, which is three will damage to everyone. That's unusual. Let's just try it again. Looks like we can possibly kill one of these trolls. So that would be 18, right? Which would be five damage. One, two, three, four, five. So it'd still be rolling. So basically we need at least, let's say one... Two, three, four, five, one, two, three. So you need at least three hours to fight a troll, probably, in early game. Oh man, it's very, very gonna be very, very difficult. Okay, well, oh my god, I wanna restart so badly. I'll see you guys next time.